welcome back to my channel. Um, today has been a really weird day. I don't have time to time to film. Um, I also just woke up and you can't tell but I slept on one side last night. So yay, we're going to try to hide that. And yeah, but it's been such a busy morning. It's like 8 a.m. right now. Um, I already hydrated and did my skincare and made my bed. So yay me, this is going to be a great, great day. But yeah, so like I said, not a whole time to film, um, so let's get started. So as you can tell by the title, I am about to do one of my most requested videos and this is how I edit my Instagram photos. So I'm going to go through a lot of details on how I produce photos, how I edit them, and more importantly how I plan my posts and how I create a feed for my Instagram that's very very important to me. One thing I won't go too in depth with is my presets. I am currently working on a preset pack to hopefully release in the next few months. I'm really, really excited for this project, but at the moment, I'm not ready to um, share my presets yet. One thing I can say is that after doing a lot of research on presets and what I've seen from other bloggers and influencers, I know that I want to bring the price down a lot for mine. I want these presets to be attainable for the majority of my audience, and I want them to just be as accessible as possible and if that means bringing the price down then I definitely plan on doing that so one idea I have in mind is to do $20 for a pack and then um, $5 maybe per individual preset but yeah so um, stay tuned for all of that like I said I'm so so excited for this project and if you have any thoughts on presets, pricing, um, availability, or other details related to that, whether it's questions, comments, whatever, please leave those down below. I would love to hear them. And yeah. Okay, let's get into everything else. First, I'm going to talk about taking photos. I know this sounds so basic, but if you have a feed plan or if you want your Instagram to have a feed theme of any sort, you need to know what that theme is before you start taking photos. So let's say, for example, you really want a certain color to be throughout your feed. I, for a time, really wanted a pink feed and that ended up being so, so hard because finding pink objects to shoot was ridiculous. And if I haven't mentioned this before, you definitely want to shoot objects that are already the color that you want to have on your feed versus just filtering the feed. So for me, finding pink photos that worked with the pink theme was really hard because it ended up being a lot of flowers, a lot of sunset photos, the right kind of sunset photos. Um, I found a pink brick wall that I shot almost all of my outfits in front of, and that's just an outdoor type of things. Indoor it was different, it was a bit easier to do indoor with a specific color. But if you're doing outdoor with a color themed feed, you need to be very patient and you need to plan ahead a lot. So the biggest takeaway from all of what I just said is if your feed theme or if what you want for your feed is very specific to a certain color palette, then planning photo shoots ahead of time and knowing what you are shooting is the most important thing. And then from there, the filtering is so much easier and then the feed just kind of happens. Now, if you aren't looking for a specific color feed, then you do have a lot more options. So I'm looking at my feed right now, and I'll probably have a pop-up over here. Um, but essentially, I don't have a strong color palette at the moment, and it's very, very liberating for me. And right about here, I decided to commit to a pink feed, and this proved to be very, very tricky. Now, here's an example of a photo that involves a pink wall, a pink object, and it was really, really easy to work with. Um, this is a photo that didn't have pink in it initially, but I edited the crap out of it to make it look pink enough. It was kind of stressful. The pink, I didn't really want the pink to die out, but it did kind of fade and then come back a lot of times. It's been kind of weird, but it's part of my realizing that I can't keep up a perfectly pink feed all the time, and so I kind of 
switched around, kept with a warm feed as I call it, you know, warm tones, but not so committed to the color. I basically went from freaking out about whether or not I had pink objects to then just working with a nice filter. So what I'm doing now essentially with the colors is I still have my very pink photos, like this most recent photo I took. I have this burgundy that I've newly incorporated into my fall feed, and I also have photos that are very, very different, but I make all these different kinds of photos work because I plan out my feed far in advance, and when I plan it out, I make sure that photos that are similar in color and style are far enough away from each other on my grid that everything kind of blends together nicely. I wouldn't want to have two of these leaf photos from this shoot next to each other because that would be a little too a little too much. So that's most of what I have to say about colors when it comes to planning out photos. My next thing with planning photo shoots is just the basics. Make sure you have good lighting. It's so, so difficult to edit a photo that has horrible lighting in it. I'll show you one example. This is a photo that I needed to post that day, but by the time I was taking the photo, I already lost my daylight for that day, and so I had to edit the crap out of this one. And honestly, I don't think it turned out that well. Um, I was kind of disappointed with how the edit ended up making it look. But other photos, like this one, with this leaf photo was taken on a very, very cloudy day, but it was a cloudy, bright day. And so the way that that helped the shoot was it made all of the light very even on me. So I didn't have awkward shadows. It wasn't too bright, too dark. It was honestly perfect lighting for this one. Uh, I definitely recommend golden hour or a cloudy day where there's even lighting that you can work with. Even my indoor photos, I try to get as much natural light in them because shooting with lighting equipment, it's just not, doesn't work. Another thing I'm happy that I've really learned to shoot is outfit flat lace. Um, I usually like to start with the tops and bottoms and angling them in a way where you can see well enough what the product looks like. Um, it looks more put together. And so in this one photo I'm looking at, I've got a skirt and a sweater. So I folded the skirt and the sweater so that they didn't take up too much space. And then I added a purse, a necklace, and to make the necklace stand out, I also included the bag that the necklace comes in so that you can see it more clearly. And then I added the shoes. Um, one nice touch to this photo is the string lights that I put in. That way it kind of brings everything together. It's not just a bunch of items laid out and they all kind of are connected that way. They brighten up anything. It's awesome. So that's kind of my main advice when it comes to shooting and sort of the taking photos portion of all of this. So moving away from what I have to say about taking photos, next I'm gonna talk about editing photos really, really quickly. Like I said, I have Lightroom presets that I will start sharing soon enough. So in my Lightroom app, I have a bunch of different albums with different projects I'm working on at the moment. Um, right now I'm editing some photos of some bracelets for a blog post that's coming up in the next few weeks. And essentially what I do when I edit a photo is I'm gonna sort of give you an example on screen. But I take one photo that I've already, I've already added the preset to it and I've tweaked it a little bit to work with the lighting that's going on in the photo. And then I just copy that setting and then paste it onto essentially a photo that's from the same shoot. That way I don't have to take too much time to edit each photo individually or, you know, it, it saves so much time. Anyway, so now that I have all of these ready, I then download them to my camera roll, which is really nice. And then I've got them ready there. Now the important thing with when I plan my feed isn't so much the editing because I do edit all my photos very, very similarly. And so it's really easy for them to work together. But now the important thing is how I lay them out. So I know that was really, really fast with editing and editing style. Um, I really just use Lightroom and I use my presets. I will tweak exposure sometimes because I do like a lot of exposure on my photos. And then I also will tweak the color. I like a pink tint to my photos, some desaturation, a lot of warmth, 
and um, if I end up looking really, really pale, which I almost always look super pale, I will specifically edit the orange in the photo to make me look a little bit more tan. Now that's a little extreme for me, but a hey, whatever. So my next app that I really recommend is Preview. This is the main thing I use to make my photos and my feed look so cohesive and so nice is I use this app to basically I'll insert a bunch of photos that I haven't posted yet. So up here you can see them. I also have these photos I've added which are basically just screenshots of one of my favorite colors. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird but I use these photos as kind of spacers to move around um, and kind of fill space for a photo that I need to shoot but haven't yet. So for example this Friday I have a giveaway coming up that I'm really really excited about but I haven't shot it yet so I've got this little guy here to hold, hold place in the feed so that I have a better idea of what everything else is going to look like before I've shot it. So right now I have a post that's going up later today and that one's ready to sort of go and it's already planned out and everything. Up higher I have a lot of photos that I know I want to post but I don't know exactly how that's going to happen. So this is a shoot I did a while back and it's a really nice photo but I'm probably going to use it for a campaign that isn't going to go live until next week so I don't have to worry about that too much. This is a cute outfit photo that I wanted to post a while back but it didn't work with my feed at the time and so I've kept it for later. Um, this is another photo that is super super cute and I know I want to post it maybe in a couple weeks but it's way up there with other photos that I've had that I will probably post one day but I don't really have a plan for them yet. So this app is just so nice because I can move the photos around and kind of pick and choose how I do things. Now a couple things on my posting sort of rules if you have. My only big theme that I've kept up with my feed for so long is that I like to do a photo of me and then a photo not of me and I know that sounds kind of weird how I say that but what that ends up boiling down to is I try to mix it up so that everything looks more cohesive and it's not like selfie flat lay selfie flat lay it's more of like selfie flat lay photo of the sky photo of me but far away and so on you know I try to really mix it up as much as I can but it's kind of difficult that way aside from the advice on colors my biggest advice is definitely to mix up photos as much as you can which I know is super super hard but when you look at a final feed where selfies and far away photos are all blended together or photos that are more pink or photos that are more fall are also separated in a way where they all kind of work together and blend it's so so nice and I'm really really happy whenever like I have a feed that works like that I don't know if I have any more advice to include in this video in particular I went over taking photos, best advice to take them, um, choosing a theme and sticking with it and how you stick with it, choosing filters and also sticking with those, um, using Lightroom to edit photos, it's so great, so user friendly, love it. I also went over some of my favorite things to have in a photo, like the brightness, the um, tint, saturation, all that good stuff. I also went over how I plan out my feed, um, which is my favorite, favorite thing. Um, now that I've transitioned from having a color themed feed, planning out the feed for like weeks in advance with all the photos laid out all nicely is my favorite, favorite thing to do. And then from there, I just kind of post and then that's it. With this video, you'll see today, I'll also be posting a whole blog post about my favorite apps that I use to edit and that's really nice. I'll go over in that blog post more in detail about my stories and how I kind of plan out that aesthetic with my Instagram. Um, so you'll see that there and if you're watching this video from the blog post that all that information is just down below. So that's basically it for all the advice I have now for Instagram photos. I definitely enjoyed talking about this and making this video. If you guys know me, you know that Instagram and Instagram aesthetics are two of my favorite, favorite things and this was so, so fun to talk about. If you like this sort of content, 
please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Also, comment any uh, content suggestions or other thoughts you have on the subject. I would love to hear all of it. And yeah, so I gotta go. Uh, I'm running late today, and I will see y'all later. Mwah.